that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Hi, my name is Buba Gajigo and you're watching Kerfatu. This is your educational program and now we're going to bring you lessons from senior school. If you have your kid attending senior school, get them prepared and I hope you enjoy these lessons. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three or four bedrooms or a store building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Do not engage oh, children. Sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. Don't you know about Baluo? To play Baluo? In the confines what is Baluo? Of the home. Baluo is a service that you your son can use your to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. Guidelines. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Should remain close. Hi, my and name is Buba Gajigo, and you're watching Kerfado. This is your educational program, 
and now we're gonna bring you lessons from senior school. Thank you. If you have your kid, For you, secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms. Good day, viewers our and story listeners. Building, three or four My name is Samuel Emendi. At very affordable I'm prices, here again with flexible lesson. payment plans, and at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can and enjoy the cool breeze all, with modern infrastructure such as the roads, common drainage system, modern electrification we with street lights, the, the gate system entrance with security points, and social amenities such as different gas parts station, of the organism. Mall, medical work, clinic, park, proper schools, effectiveness, care, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of every organism will want to work keep the estate clean at all times. Provide Unlike security the systems and patrol team the within the estate premises. Install latest Likewise, technologies also, such as CCTV, system, Wi-Fi, home network installation, and the solar panel and each power other backup other system. system. Also, check for out for our additional work, home facilities and, and interior design service, such as the Navo system, pilot, wall plaster, or the two communication screen, system, fingerprint home lock, that bring and a lot more. Coordination Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and uh, get a free side visit tour or contact us on 464 838 WhatsApp us First of all, there must be coordination in the body. Oh, you can visit so our when the other coordination is of course in the body on EJ Investment. Hello viewers. These are key messages from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on the coronavirus. Dear parents, keep children at home at all times. Avoid sending children to shops and markets. Do not engage children in petty trading on the streets and garages. Allow children to play within the confines of the home. Limit visitors into your homes. Adhere to COVID-19 health precautions and guidelines. Schools are closed, but learning continues. Dear teachers, you are encouraged to desist from all forms of group activities involving students. All school premises should remain closed and not to be used for any other purpose. Thank you. Good day, viewers and listeners. My name is Samuel Emende. I'm here again with another lesson on the nervous system. And you know, first of all, we are going to uh, discuss or define what is the nervous system. We said the, the nervous system is defined as a process by which different parts of the organisms work for proper effectiveness Every organism wants to work effectively. Unlike the systems in the body, they relate to each other. Likewise, also, the, the nervous system, they coordinate and they relate to each other also in the system. For us to, to work proper and effectively. The nervous system, or the two communication systems that bring about the coordination of the body are the, the endocrine and the nervous system. First of all, there must be coordination in the body. So when there, there, that coordination occurs in the body, 
we are talking about we are, we, that body is coordinating for, for it to be effective. So now those two communication systems in the body, we say they are the endocrine and the nervous system. And there's a link between the endocrine and the nervous system. And that link is the hypothalamus of the brain, which is very, very important in linking the two systems. Okay? In linking these two systems. So what are some of the importance of this coordination? We said our body needs to be coordinated. And what is the importance of having a coordinated systems in the body? One is for the protection. Like for instance, I'm standing here, and if somebody pricked me, how will the body coordinate that? Somebody pricked me with a sharp edge, either a needle, because of there's a coordination system in the body. The, in the impulse takes of that information to the brain, and the brain interprets it. And I'm, I'm and I, I feel, I feel the, the prick or the hot, then I have to move. So while I'm doing that, I am protecting myself from that place. If I still stand in that place, I, may, I might be injured in that, in that place. So that is why I need uh, the, 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 this communication system. They, are, they serve as a protection. And another thing also that helps the organism to survive. Survival is very important. Nobody wants to die at early stage or at a, at, at a, at a young life. Okay, so we need to survive. So in order for us to survive, there must be a coordinating system in our bodies. For us also, for us to maintain the health of the organism. Like for instance, if you are walking continuously without rest, you know, you are wearing your body off. So now for you to be healthy, you need to coordinate your activities. You walk at a certain time, you rest. So now we are going to be looking at what the differences between these two communicative systems of the body, which is the difference between the endocrine and the nervous system. So now, if you look at the differences, the, uh, the nervous system is on the right-hand side and the endocrine is on the left-hand side. So now we said the nervous system messages are passed mainly as electrical impulse along the nerves. Messages are passed along what? the nerves. Okay? And uh, these ones, they are like from the brain to the spinal cord. And, you know, these are the nervous system. And then the endocrine system, for that one, messages are passed through chemical substances or like through hormones or blood or in the blood. Like that's why most of the time when you are sick, you go to the hospital. One of the things that they can check your, 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 your health condition, they have to take a sample of your blood. They are tested in the lab to determine or to, to ascertain what is the sickness or what type of sickness is affecting you. So now, when you also look at the nervous system, the response is fast, very, very quick. Like, for instance, somebody pricked me. In that twinkle of an eye, I'm able to, to, to feel and then respond to the action. And then, but whereas for the endocrine, the response is very, very low. It's, it's very, very slow. So like, for instance, you have to take, like if you go to the hospital and you are feeling sick, you take your blood sample to the, to, uh, to the lab, you have to give them some time, about maybe 20 minutes or so, for them to determine, to ascertain the cause of your, what, your health situation. So now it says, the nervous system effect is an effect for a very short time. It's very, very effective for a very short time. Whereas the endocrine system is for a very long time. So now the nervous system does not, depends, uh, does not depend on the impulse. Okay? It does not depend on the impulse. Like for instance, whether, you know, with the impulse or it does not depend on the stimulus. Like for instance, uh, if something happens, so you have to respond to the environment of it before you, you move. So now, whereas the endocrine system, too much or too little can be metabolic disturbance. It can be as a result of metabolic disturbance. Maybe digestion is not done properly in your, in your system, 
and you have a disturbance there. That's why you, you have these problems. Okay. <clears throat> and then also another, another difference is also the nervous system, it is controlled by the brain and the spinal cord only. Nervous system, it is controlled by the brain. The brain here and the spinal cord, that is the backbone. Whereas the endocrine system, it is controlled by what? the pituitary gland. And then you say the pituitary gland is the one that helps in what? In growth. So now, an, another difference also that you can find in the nervous system, effect, uh, affectus receives the messages. Effectus, these are different types of what? neurons that are found in the body. They are able to receive messages. They pass, those messages are relayed and then taken to the brain and they are interpreted and they come back to us and they tell us what types of what effect that you are, what, what, what is happening to you. So now, for, for that of the endocrine, the target organs receive the messages. Endocrine receive the target organs. So now we are looking at what? The types of the nervous systems in mammals or in mammals, the type of nervous system. We have two types of nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, that is PNS and CNS. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. If you look at this, this diagram, we are seeing the different parts of the nervous system. Okay, that's the central, uh, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We have from the brain, and then we have the spinal cord, and then we, we have the backbone comes down. In the brain, we have the cerebrum, and then we have, there are different parts, okay, of the, of the spinal cord. So these are the, 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 the uh, uh, structure, but we are going to be discussing the central nervous system first before we go to, uh, to the peripheral nervous system. We said the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. So in this central nervous system, we are going to look at the, the brain first, and then, we, and then we look at the partitions of the brain or the different types of brain. It's, first of all, you said the brain is the most highly specialized organ protected by the skull. You know, when we look at this, the, the, skull, the skeletal system, we talk about the, the skull to protect the brain. And God forbid, in a situation where you have an accident and your skull has a problem, I said to us that the last time that when your skull has a problem, you have a problem with your, with your brain. And sometimes you may lose your life because the skull can have problem and your brain is being destroyed. Okay? And you say that the brain is the most specialized organ that is responsible for, uh, and is protected by, what? by the skull. I said the, the brain is made up of three parts. We said the forebrain, the midbrain, and the high brain. Okay, if you look at the, the diagram here, we have the different parts of our, the brain, the human brain. We have the skull, the frontal lobe, that is the face, the face part of it. We have the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and then uh, after the hypothalamus, we also have the pituitary gland, okay? And as we said, the pituitary gland is the one that, that is, is regulate what? The endocrine. And then after the pituitary glands, we have the pons, we have the medulla oblongata, we have the spinal cord, we have the midbrain, the cerebrum, the penal body, the dural matter, the corpus, and the optical lobe, and the parental lobe. These are the different parts of the human brain. Okay? So the forebrain. We said the forebrain is made up of two main parts. That is the cerebrum and the olfactory lobe. And these parts, they have their roles to play in an organism. And the minor parts, the talum and the hypothalamus. We say this is the largest part of the brain. It controls action seat for intelligence, where the intelligence are determined. And that's why sometimes, sometimes people, some people do say that if a person has a big head, most of the time it's always intelligent. I think that's just an intelligent guess, but not all the time 
the people with big brain, they are, they, they are always intelligent. Some people can have some con congenital defects or hydrocephalus, so it, and their brains can be a bit enlarged. So sometimes that is not always the, 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 the correct thing to say. So also, we also look, look at what you call the consensus and learning, and also concerns with the, the concentration and the coordination of what impulse. That's what you call the cerebrum. That's what it does. The, that's what it does in the what, in the body. And then we also look at what you call the olfactory lobes. This is located at auditory and the forebrain that receives sensory impulse of what smell. Like some people, they are very very good at detecting smell. Like if they come to a particular room, if something is smelling unpleasant, they can easily detect it. Or like if people are cooking in, at a particular distance, a certain type of dish, like for instance, they are cooking benetine, and you know the aroma that is coming from that side is, is so strong, and you know, it's, it's, it's appealing or it's pleasant. Sometimes you can, some people, they have that ability to, to detect that very quickly, okay? The olfactory loop that's the one that's responsible for what? smell. And sometimes some people, they have problem with this, some of this, they cannot even, they cannot even smell properly. Sometimes they have to bring something central. Can you please smell this for me? I, I, I lose my sense of what smell. Sometimes when you are also suffering from cold, you may not also able to, what, to, to smell properly. So that is not an issue that we cannot smell at all. But some people, they need to go to the hospital for them to, so that they can be helped. And they also have what you call the talon. These are two oval structures attached to the back of the forebrain. So now, what is the functions? of this forebrain, okay? It helps in experiencing sensation. Sensation, like for instance, there are some th forms of what feelings that you may feel around your body and irritating, they, they might be irritating or they might not be or pleasant. They okay, or like you can be feel some bone around you. That's what you call, it's a sensation that you are feeling. And uh, you know, it helps, that's that the rule. We say it's, it is the seat of what consciousness or awareness. You know, some people can sit in a particular place and they will not be conscious of what they are doing or what they are even thinking about. They are absent-minded. Sometimes you, some students can, be, can sit in the class and you tell them, hey, please come back here. Okay? Because their mind, they are far. Maybe they are suffering from some other issues outside the classroom and their mind is far away. So if these things, uh, that means that they have to be aware. If you want to, uh, to uh, gain the, the, the maximum attention of the child, they have to be able to follow in. Like we are, while we are teaching, if you don't follow and you, are, you leave your mind wandering, you will be lost. Okay? And also they receive impulse from the midbrain, the high brain, and also the spinal cord. That is cerebrum. It sends and pass impulse to the central cortex, vice versa. It sends and pass impulse to the central cortex and also the central cortex sends impulse backwards. So now we move to what you call the hypothalamus. That is another part of the brain. It is just found below the, the thalamus. It is the main coordinating and the control center of the automatic nervous system. So what is the function of this hypothalamus? It controls sleep and alertness. Sometimes you can be in a class, maybe the class might be boring or you, you, you already learn about this, and the things that you are learning is not new. You may feel, your hypothalamus may feel relaxed, and you, are, you go into a sleep. And also appetite, it controls appetite and feeling. Sometimes some people, they have appetite on a particular, uh, 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 for a particular thing, and that means that their hypothalamus is very, very active. And they feel, the way they feel on some certain issues is very, very strong. Also, control body temperature. The hypothalamus helps to control the body temperature and also to control osmotic regulation. The control of the internal fluid in the body is been, been done by the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus also controls the secretions of hormones from the pituitary gland. These hormones that are in our bodies, like the production of, of adrenaline, testosterone, okay, all these hormones that are the, the secretion is powered by what you call the hypothalamus. And then we are moving to what you call the midbrain. We have the forebrain, 
the midbrain, and the and the, what, the last brain, in the high in the hind brain. Sorry, the hind brain. So that the we say the midbrain consists of small and unconspicuous part of the brain. It is a very short region consisting of optic lobes, the penal body, and the pituitary gland. What is the functions of the midbrain? The midbrain it is the site of vision and sight. That's where some people, uh, like for instance, if you are having problem with your eyes, they will advise you to go to sex side because those people are the ones that are specialized in helping to correct our vision. Okay, so that but the midbrain is the site that is responsible of vision and sight. How you can see, okay, and when you go to the, and when you go to these people, they will advise you. If you need to put in, you know, to take in a glass or to put on a lenses, you will, be, you will be advised to put on lenses. It also connects the forebrain and the high brain. It's a connection between the forebrain and the high brain. That means that we said the brain is divided into two parts: the forebrain, the midbrain, and the high brain. The high brain is the last part. So now we move on to what we call the high brain. We say the high brain, the high brain together with the midbrain coordinate most of the body automatic involuntary activities. It composed of cerebrum, the pons, the viral, and the, what, the medulla oblongata. This is the high brain. And the high brain consists of what we call the cerebrum. And then we are going to look at these parts of the brain one after. The cerebrum is a thick and convoluted portion of, what, of the high brain. It's a very thick part. Like when we I show you the picture of what of the of the, the parts of the brain, we say we saw that the cerebrum is very very thick, and this and this part of the brain controls posture or balance of the body. Like for instance, the way I'm standing is the cerebrum that's helped me to, to able to, to stand. It helped me to to have a balance. Okay, though balancing is controlled by what we call the semicircular canal in the ear, but they work in pair or they work hand in glove with the cerebrum to do that balancing, okay? It coordinates muscle actions in involuntary response. Like for instance, involuntary, that means that you don't decide to do that action. Maybe, maybe there is something that just happened and you just have to, to take a quick response to that. That's what you call an involuntary action. You, it's an action that is done within the will, without the will of the body, okay? It receives also impulse from auditory organs. So that was why I said this one, they work in hand in glove with the, the cerebrum, with the, the semicircular canal, because impulse are received from the auditory organ. And what is the auditory organ? Is the, the ear. The ear that is the one that is responsible for hearing. So now you say the pons or the varillas, it is a broad band of fat fibers that connect the lateral cerebral hemisphere and uh, and then we move towards the medulla oblongata so now the medulla oblongata this is the posterior end of uh, the brain that continues into the spinal cord what are the functions of this uh, the medulla oblongata it controls involuntary action especially those concerns with the respiration as i said earlier on you know, respiration, you cannot, block, you cannot tell your nose to stop releasing carbon dioxide and taking in oxygen. Or you cannot just talk to your heart and say, this heart today, you are not going to breathe for about 30, 30 seconds. Because you cannot do that, or about one minute or two minutes. Okay? Or you cannot say, I'm going to stop you from breathing throughout the day. Or you say to the food that, you, that is being eaten, that you are not going to be digested in the stomach. As soon as the food enters into the stomach, there are digestive enzymes that are there waiting for the food. As soon as it's land, the digestion process now takes, and then the food is being digested. The heart, the heart pumps in blood, and then in and out of the heart. And respiration, you take in carbon dioxide and release out carbon dioxide. Uh, release out. You take in out oxygen and release out carbon dioxide. It, uh, the, it also, we also talk about the medulla oblongata also controls the constriction and the dilation of the blood vessels. In the heart, we have what we call the diastole and the systole. The diastole, we talk about the contraction, and the systole, we talk about the relaxation of the heart. When the blood is being 
dilated. Blood is now being moved and coming back to the heart. So that's what they're talking about, the diastole and the systole of the, of the heart. So now we are moving on to what, uh, the spinal cord. The spinal cord coordinates simple reflex action. For example, knee jack. Okay? Knee jack and the automatic reflex, such as that sweating. Okay? Like, for instance, if, if you are walking under the sun or you are doing exercise, because of those exercises, you are releasing a lot of what? Sweat. Okay? You are releasing a lot of sweat. So that is that's what the, the function of the spinal cord it says it acts as a pathway between the spinal nerves and the brain. The spinal cord acts as a pathway between the spinal nerves and the brain. And then we move on to what you call the peripheral nervous system. We say the peripheral nervous system includes all nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain is this and the backbone. That's what you call the central nervous system. But the peripheral nervous system is all the nerves uh, outside the central nervous system as the brain and the spinal cord. You say includes all nerves outside the brain and the spinal cord. These are sensory nerves which lead from all parts of the body to the central nervous systems and motor neurons running from the central nervous system to all parts of the body. So now these nerves moves to all parts of the body. And these nerves, they form what you call the peripheral nervous system. Example is what, like the, the, the spiral nerves, the cranial nerves. These are all types of what you call the peripheral nervous system. We say the spiral nerves, you said these are nerves which are connected to the spinal cord. Okay? Which are connected to, to the spinal cord. And then the cranial nerves, those are the ones that are connected to the what? to the brain. So when you move on to the to the cranial nerves, you have the peripheral nervous system is a subdivision, is subdivided into two. These are the somatic nervous system and the automatic nervous system. That's the somatic nervous system is SNS, somatic nervous system, and the automatic nervous system is ANS. So we move on to the, the somatic nervous system. He said this controls activities which are mainly voluntary. Like for instance, I decide to do some, uh, I decide to do something by my own will. We are called they are voluntary actions. We say the somatic nervous system is made up of 12 pairs of cranial nerves in the head and 31 pairs of the spinal nerves in the body of a man. These ones are made, 12 of them, they are in pairs on the head and tatuan pairs in the spinal nerve in a man. Whereas in the automatic nervous system, it is concerned with the control of the body's involuntary activities. It is concerned with the control of the body's involuntary activities. Activities, for example, the heartbeat. Because you cannot control, as I said earlier on, you cannot say the heart to stop beating. The heartbeat, digestion, breathing, and secretion of sweat. These are all examples of what involuntary actions. You cannot ask these actions to stop or to, to continue doing, or to stop or to keep on doing what it's doing. These are involuntary. You, you, they, are, they are not controlled by will. So now we are going to be looking at the differences between the somatic and the, and the automatic nervous system. We said the automatic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. First of all, the somatic nervous system impulse speeds along the motor fiber that extend from the central nervous system to a factor with our synapses. Whereas the automatic nervous system impulse spans along motor fibers that extend from the central nervous system to gangrene to where the synapses and, and from gangrene to effector. So like for instance, when we look at the uh, structure of some of this nervous system, in, in, the, in the, the upcoming slides, we will see the gangrene, the synapses, and the effector, effector uh, uh, nerves. We said the somatic nervous system, it affects the skeletal muscles. 
the somatic nervous systems affect the skeletal muscles, whereas the, the automatic nervous system affects the glands, the cardiac muscles, and the smooth muscles. The cardiac muscles, those are the muscles of the, of the heart, and some of the smooth muscles around our, our skin or on, on the bicep and the tricep. Okay, and in the, also in the, uh, in the somatic nervous system, it also stimulates effectors. Whereas the automatic nervous system, it may stimulate or inhibit effectors. It, it inhibit, that means to hinder, or it has to stimulate, it causes it what, to rise up or to, to hinder it. And also, the last, the body activities are mainly voluntary in the somatic nervous system. Activities of the bodies are always voluntary are mainly voluntary, whereas the automatic nervous system, the activities are mainly in, involuntary. The differences between uh, somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Okay, the first one, the impulse speed along motor fibers that extend from the central nervous system to effect to effectors with our synapses. We are going to look at the structure of some of these synapses and the ganglions. And the autonomic impulse speeds along motor fibers that extends from the central nervous system to the ganglion to where the synapses and are formed and ganglions to effectors. So now it affects the skeletal muscles, whereas the autonomic affect glands such as the, the cardiac muscles and the smooth muscles, the cardiac muscles, these are the muscles of the heart and some of the muscles of the body, okay? And then also, we talk about the somatic nervous system, it always stimulates effector, whereas the, the, the autonomic may also stimulate or inhibit effectors. Body's activities are mainly voluntary in the somatic nervous system. You do it at your own will, at your own choice. But whereas in the autonomic, activities are mainly involuntary. That means you do it without even noticing it or without your own your willpower. The type of autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, this activates what is often termed the fight or the fight response. It is located at the spinal cord and the, thor and the thorax and the upper lumbar region. So like for instance, if we talk about, when we are talking about the skeletal system, we mention some of these things, the thorax around the chest and the upper lumbar. Just below, below the chest, you have the lumbars, the upper lumbars. So that's what you call the sympathetic nervous system. They are, they are, they, it suffers of a defense system or to fight any forms of a response that comes into the body. And here, we also look at the parasympathetic nervous system. This consists of the, the nerves, which connect the internal organs to the 10 cranial nerves and the sacral region of the spinal cord. And when you talk about the sacral region, that's what the tail end of the spinal cord. And this, the parasympathetic nervous system, is the one that's responsible to connect the internal organs, those internal organs that are in the body, to all these parts. So now we are looking at the differences between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Ac uh, the sympathetic nervous system accelerates heartbeat. That means that it increases the rate of our heartbeat, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system decreases or slows the rate of our heartbeat. So, um, and also, the sympathetic nervous system constricts the, the arteries. So that the arteries, they are, constant, they are a bit closer, okay? So whereas uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, it dilates arteries, cause the, the arteries to be dilated, okay? Okay? And the sympathetic also nervous system also dilates bronchial and the bronchioles in the, during respiration. In the lungs, you have for the bronchial and the bronchial. But whereas the parasympathetic, they, they constrict bronchioles and bronchioles. That means that these two types of nervous system, they work antagonistic, they work oppositely, okay? So now, uh, also, another thing also, we talk about the sympathetic nervous system dilate iris. The iris, those are the part of the eye, and then 
also in the parasympathetic nervous system, they constrict the irix. Okay? So if you look at this, these two nervous systems, they are operating uh, oppositely or antagonistically to each other. So now another thing also, the, the sympathetic nervous system, slow gut movement, that's what you call the peristalsis movement of food in the, in the, in the gullet or in the esophagus. So whereas this, uh, the, 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 the parasympathetic nervous system speed up gut movement, they speed up what, the peristalsis movement of food in the throat. Okay, and also uh, the sympathetic nervous system constricts the bladder and the anal sphincter. Okay, the bladder and the anal sphincter. Whereas the, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system relaxes the bladder and the anal sphincter. You know, there are muscles that are found around the, the anus. That is the one that helps to, to control the opening and the closing of the anus. Then you want to use the toilet or to use the toilet to do a heavy job, job there. So that's, that's the anal sphincter. That's what, the one that opens up, allow the feces to come out. You said the sympathetic nervous system, none, stimulates none. It's none. And this one, the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates and secretions of what? Tears. But in the, like for instance, somebody beats uh, you and you feel the pain, you will cry. Okay? And then this, uh, this, uh, the tears is stimulated by what? the parasympathetic nervous system. But whereas the sympathetic nervous system, it does not have that ability to, to, to secrete or to stimulate uh, tears. So now this, the sympathetic nervous system also inhabits secretion of what saliva. Like for instance, when you are eating and the, the saliva mixed with the food to make it into a form of a bowl and for easy uh, peristalsis movement from the, from the gut to the stomach. Whereas the, the parasympathetic stimulate secretion of what? Saliva. In the sympathetic also, we say increases secretion of sweat. Some people, they sweat. And some people, they are sweat, it's as if they are just, they, they are like pigs, they do not have what, the sweat gland. They can walk all, all day long, and you, they'll just sweat. Maybe they, uh, that means that their, their sympathetic nervous system is not functioning well, because if it was, uh, if their parasympathetic nervous system was functioning well, they would have able to, have to secrete sweat. But in this case, maybe they, have, they did not have the ability to secrete sweat. But the sympathetic nervous system, they has the ability to secrete the sweat. Also, the sympathetic nervous system induces ejaculation. Okay, it's what induces ejaculation. Ejaculation is the release of the sperm into the female reproductive organ. Okay, so that's what you call ejaculation. But whereas the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates secretions, okay, it stimulates the secretions of what of ejaculation. So now we we, we look at the central nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, uh, and then now we are moving toward neurons. You say these are nerve cells that make up of nervous systems, which are highly specialized for different functions, for receiving and coordinating impulse. Neurons, we say they are responsible for receiving and coordinating impulse. How will I know that, you know, like for instance, if I come up near fire and I feel the heat, I'm receiving some forms of impulse. So I, to my own understanding, uh, to, to me, I am, I'll be advised by myself to leave or less until I want to burn myself. If I don't move, I can be burned. But that does not mean that I was not informed by my impulse, so, okay? Because there was information that had been sent to my impulse and those, uh, I received them and I need to act. So now, we are going to be looking at what? A structure of a neuron. We say a neuron consists of three main parts. The cell body, the dendrites, and the axon. A neuron consists of three main parts. The cell body, the dendrites, and the, and the cell body, the dendrites, and the, the axon. So now, this is a structure a diagram of a typical neuron showing there is labeling. So this diagram, okay, like for instance, if you look from my, from my right, we have the dendrites, that end parts of what 
of the neuron, and there it has a nucleus. And you know what, what is the function of the nucleus? It controls the activity of the cell. And this neuron is a cell, okay? And then the other part, you have uh, the cell body and the axon, that is the joint. The node of uh, Ranvia and the malin seat, and then the axon terminal. So this is the, the different structure, or this is a, a typical structure of a neuron. So types of neuron. We have what they call sensory neurons. They transmit impulse from the sensory cells to the central nervous system. Like sensory, I am able to hear. And they transmit this information from the sensory cells to the central nervous system. Okay? Because when somebody speaks, I pick up what the information. And then they pass through my ear, my auditory nerves, and I'm able to hear. Those informations are passed. Okay? That's what we call the sensory neuron. Another type of neuron, we call it a motor neuron. It carries impulse from the central nervous system to effector organs, muscles, and glands. They carry this information to effector organs, to such as muscles and the glands. And the last, or the third part of neuron, is called, we call it the relay neurons, intermediate. We say they are found in the central nervous system. They connect sensory and motor neurons with each other. They connect sensory and motor neurons in each other. So that means that we have three types of neuron, sensory neuron, motor neuron, and relay neurons. What are the functions of what a neuron? Functions of a neuron. We say the neurons conduct impulse to the brain. So these impulse that are, taken, uh, are passed to the brain, they are carried by what? Neurons. We also say that neurons conduct impulse to the sense organs. The sense organs like my eye, the nose, the thumb. These are the sense organs, the skin, okay? These are the sense organs that help, the neurons help to carry impulse to these organs and we are able to interpret. Like for instance, I'm seeing something walking on the street there. How will I know this is a human being or this is a donkey or this is a cow, okay? By impulse being carried to the, uh, to the sensory and that is being interpreted to me and by, by virtue of being knowing that and fine nerves integrate the reflex action. It enables us to be aware of our environment. Like for instance, our environment, when the place is cold, I should be able to detect that, you know, the place is cold. Okay, when the place is hot, when a, a lot of load, I'm carrying a lot of load, the pressure on it is, is high. So that means uh, I begin to, to feel. Neurons also help to keep us alive, even when we are sleeping. Neurons help us to keep us alive. So now we are also going to be looking at transmissions of impulse by neurons. Impulse are transmitted by what? Impulse. Okay? Transmissions of impulse by neurons. So uh, impulse are transmitted by neurons. Transmissions of impulse through a neuron fiber can be categorized into three phases. The resting potential, the action potential, and the respiratory phases, repulsive phases. Okay, we said the resting potential, this is the, the phase when no impulse is passing through the, the fiber. And uh, the action potential, you say this is when a dendrite receives the impulse. The beginning of the action, when, when we look at the, the structure of a, new, uh, of a neuron, we see the different parts, the actions, the dendrites. We say the the, the action potential, we say this is when a dendrite receives the, the stimulus. The beginning of the action is stimulated. The repulsion phases, we says before, this, before the onset of this repulsion phase, the inner side of the membrane of the, the nerve fiber is electropositive relative to the outside. Soon after the transmission of impulse, the resting potential is re-established types of neuron actions. We have reflex actions. Sometimes some of these actions, they happen around our, our knee or our ankle. We said a reflex action is an involuntary or an automatic action. It responds to impulse initiated by a stimulus. A given stimulus always produces the same response. Examples of reflex actions are blinking of an eye, when I blink, it's an example of what a reflex action, jacking of what the knee, 
salivation, cough, peristalsis. These are examples of what you call reflex action. If I see in this diagram, we had a diagram to show the types of neurons. We say the three types of neurons are the sensory neuron, the interneural neuron, and the motor neuron. So these are the three types of what? Neurons. Examples of voluntary actions. Writing. You choose to write. Like when you're in class, the teacher says, uh, can we, we are going to start class exercise. And all of us, we have to pick our pens. So we write dancing. When music is being played, you, you dance, you wish to dance to the tune. Or like also eating is an example of what voluntary action. You, you choose it. driving. Some people can drive, some cannot, singing and walking. These are all examples of what you call involuntary actions. Voluntary actions. Characteristics of voluntary action. It involves prolonged response. That means that the response is always long in voluntary actions. It res its response is controlled by the brain. Like eating, you can control your eating. Either you choose to eat or you don't choose to, you, you, you decide not to eat. You say also, the voluntary action is response to a particular response. It involves many nerve cells. Okay? So now we are going to look at the differences between voluntary actions and involuntary actions. We said a reflex action is initiated by a muscle receptor, whereas a voluntary action is initiated in the brain. Voluntary is initiated by the brain, whereas the reflex is initiated by what? a muscle receptor. Okay, like the muscle, like for instance, we talked about reflex action, and we are, now we are, talking, we are looking at the differences between the two of them. We said voluntary is initiated by the brain, whereas the other one, the reflex is initiated by the muscle. The reflex actions also occurs unconsciously. You, you do it without, you don't think about it prior before you do a, a certain task or you do a certain thing, but you just, it just happens spontaneously. So you respond to the reaction. So voluntary actions occur consciously. You do it with your awareness that what you are doing is either wrong or is either good. So now it is an automatic and, it's automatic and fast. Reflex actions are very, very fast. Whereas voluntary actions is, is neither fast nor slow. He said a reflex action is inborn, it's innate, okay, it's inborn in you, whereas voluntary action, it can be learned, you learn about it. That's what you talk about, nature and nurture. It is part of you, it is a reflex action, it's na nature, but the other one, you nurture it, okay. So some people will ask you, the eating mannerism, how you supposed to eat on a table, that one you learn it. But the other actions, but if people give you food by by nature of by virtue of fact, you know that putting food in the mouth, you can just put it in a, uh, by that by in your mouth, and you can just start chewing. But in the table mannerism, you learn how to do things on the table, and then not chewing food and opening your mouth, and, and while and at the same time you are talking. It says, uh, nerves impulse do not reach the brain. Okay, the nerve impulse do not reach in the brain, whereas the other nerve impulse always reach the brain. So now we, we look at the simple reflect arc. We say the simple reflect arc is a simple routine in the nervous system, whereby a stimulus is received, a response is made. The stimulus is received, and your response is what is, been, is made. Okay, part of a reflex action. When you talk about the parts of the sensory cells, the cells receive stimulus, okay? The cells receive what? Stimulus. So now, the sensory or afferent neurons, this conduct or transmit nerve impulse from the sensory cell to the spinal cord or the brain. Okay? So now, the condition, uh, condition reflex. You said, this is a learned response after birth, which once acquired can be performed without thinking about it. So now the condition re reflex, that means that you learn it after you are born. There are some certain activities or certain tasks that we learn 
after we have been born. Like, for instance, walking. Some of these tasks we learn them after birth. Writing. These are tasks that we learn. Okay? Reading. We, children are taught how to read from the early stage. And then driving and swimming. These are some of the tasks. We are, it's a conditioned reflex. We, are, we learn these tasks. Uh, okay? And then from there, we continue doing them by ourselves. And then the role of conditioned reflex on our behavior, it helps to acquire new skills. Like for instance, uh, you are writing like a crab walking on, this, on the sand, and we are taught how to write properly. You know, you will be able to write clearly and legibly. In your effort, you acquire a writing skill that, that can be used in the near future, like when somebody wants to employ you or use you to do some certain task. It also helps to develop certain behavior which are not originally in the, in the individual. It helps the person to develop certain behavior, certain skills, like these footballers. You know, sometimes you go to an academy, you develop some of these skills, and you become a, 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 a renowned champion that people talk about in the world. So those things, those skills, they are learned. Unhealthy behavior may learn to. Okay, you may also help learn to unhealthy behavior. Like, for instance, some other effects like drinking. If you, if you are used to drinking of alcohol, it may give you a lot of health effects. And also some people who do smoke, they may also have some health effects. So these are learned behavior that may have somewhat dangers to them. You say this principle is used in the training of dogs for their special role in crime de detection. You know, some certain dogs, like in some of these advanced countries, they have dogs, when there is a crime, they use these dogs like sniffs to, to, to detect the suspect in a particular area. When they are, they are trained and uh, uh, suited for certain types of what, uh, uh, jobs. So when there is a crime, you see them, they move around with these dogs to help them to detect because they are conditioned reflex. They are trained to, be, to do certain type of thing. So I think uh, this is where we are going to end for today. I do hope that this lesson is educative to you, and I hope you keep on tuning. Hello viewers. These are key messages from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on the coronavirus. Dear parents, keep children at home at all times. Avoid sending children to shops and markets. Do not engage children in petty trading on the streets and garages. Allow children to play within the confines of the home. Limit visitors into your homes. Adhere to COVID-19 health precautions and guidelines. Schools are closed, but learning continues. Dear teachers, you are encouraged to desist from all forms of group activities involving students. All school premises should remain closed and not to be used for any other purpose. Thank you. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and quality.
all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Fifty-six branches more so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ah, Gambia kono aring Gambia bankala bankol. Unka kono kia bere. Hmm? Kono sifa sifa for falindi ro for nyadi lafta meme na kodi to koto ni kodi maro. Jam num number one in yonda. And num fana nata another enterprise so gali. Wola mi ndi ko domoro fana ngol fana de fira le le da di man in domoro ni fana beteat. Ha. Gambia dau da ya longa kumfa kendo so gali di. Ha. E wamo e odi at ha. Afelenda. Ni wamo kani na lafta ni elen kendo le bina. Ya le buka ni la kuola. Ha 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 ha. Ya londel chosa no lo. Abarka. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Boy, Janno Seekers Restaurant. Yes, I know who be in the Dimbal. Nimba Domoro Kara Janno. Domoro Seneata, Adiata, Topotoro, Fanan Kendama Bije. Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani, Adimanda Walade, Takawe Bijele, Anim Fanan Kafa Dijang, Ekonoefa. Ekafamina Kopestri, Anim Bakery. 
iko fanam be kalele ba de lomba conference lomba workshop lomba ye fo fe ni lo dunia kono domoro betama ni lom international o tewda number 1 amanke ba do mala jam dama e sa do mo jam e sa atari ya a wo mu ku bandi sa na ko sa futandi e o to sa na ko be mu sikes restaurant dama no jam no mu yak ni manje do rombi jam aban sikes restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction Thank you.